Hello, and welcome to the podcast. Um, I received this a minute ago, and what this word says is, it's time to wake up. The alarm is going off. And so, of course, first we're going to pray. Lord God, we just give you honor, and we give you praise, and we give you glory unto today. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing. And God, we thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you, Lord God, for setting off the alarm. Lord God, thank you, Lord, for setting us into right standings with you, oh God. Touch every person, Lord God. Continue to touch and to cover each and every individual in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. It's time to wake up. The alarm is going off. So with this whole lesson, I had saw myself in this alarm at first. It was just lights going round. But the day before, I had heard a sound. Now, at first, I saw the lights. It's like I was inside of an alarm. Then all of a sudden, not too long after that, um, I saw, I heard the sound of an alarm. So first I saw it, then I heard it. Wake up, people. The alarm is going off. It's time to wake up. Romans 13 and 11 says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. I'm going to say that again. Romans 13 and 11 and that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake up to wake, to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer excuse me, than when we believed. It's time to wake up. Been sleeping too long. It says our salvation is nearer than when we believed. 12 says the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the work, works of darkness. And let us put on the light, the armor of light. So let's cast off the works of darkness. Everything that has kept us in the dark. It's time to cast those things off to the side. And put us on, on the armor of light. And the armor of light is in Jesus Christ. We have to put him on in these last and evil days. Put on the Holy Spirit. Ask him to help you to see in the midst of darkness. Ask him to help you to do the things that God has ordained you to do. Not men, but God. You know, it's just time to put off all those other things and surrender and be obedient to the will of God. 13 says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. It's not time to be going out rioting. It's not time to be drunk, not in chambering and wantonness. Not in strife and envy. Time to put all that that craziness to the side. It's a lot of people wanting. It's a lot of strife. It's a lot of envying going on. It's time to put those things to the side. And I heard this is a prophetic assignment.
2 Timothy 1 and 3 says, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. 4 says, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unformed faith that is in thee, which dwell first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who have saved us And called us with an holy calling. Not according to our works. But according to his own purpose and grace. Which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Okay, let's read that again. Who have have saved us and called us with an holy calling. Not according to our works. Ain't got nothing to do with you. He be holy for I am holy. It's because he called you with an holy calling. It's his calling. Not according to your works, but according to his own purpose and grace. It's because of him, his purpose, his grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. It it was given to you. In Christ before the world even began. Did you hear that? 10. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. Who have abolished death and have brought life and um, immorality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. 13 says, hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. He said, hold fast the form of sound words. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Everything God is doing and everything he's about to do is wonderful. God is wonderful. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called, what? Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with gov- with judgment and with justice from henceforth, 
even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. I heard the Holy Spirit say, don't get caught up in one area. One thing God is doing in this season in your life right now. But God is making things happen all around you. While you stand in your place. While things have begun to shake. Everything is about to happen all at one time. It's about to happen all at once. Daniel 9 and 27 and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even unto the constant consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate Daniel 11 and 31 and arms shall stand on this on his part and they shall pollute the the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Matthew 24 and 15 says. When ye therefore shall see the abominations of desolation. Which we just spoke of. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth let him read understand I kept hearing the word stand in the holy place stand in the holy place stand in the holy place Hebrews 12 and 1 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a a cloud of witness of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth eat so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the weight, the race that is set before us. Let me read that again. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So we need to set everything else to the side. Everything that will cause us to sin. Everything that will cause a hindrance in our walk. We have to set everything to the side and run with patience the race that is set before us. Run with patience the race that is set before us. Oh God, help us to run. Help us to run, oh Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, God, that we are equipped to run. That we've already sprint. That you taught us already. You've conditioned us, oh God, to sprint. Now it's time to run and to soar. And God, we give you honor, praise, and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Looking, two says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy was that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, he did this already. If he if he did it successfully, and he sent us the comforter to help us to do the same. Thank you, Father, for the comforter that will help us to finish this race just as Jesus Christ did. Three says, For consider him that endured such contradiction. Of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Don't faint in your, don't get so weary that you faint in your own mind. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, 
striving against sin. And ye have fought, have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Once again, he's reminding us, don't despise his chastening. Don't faint when you're being rebuked of him. 6 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chaseth. If he loves you, he's going to come after you. And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. And he scourges all the sons he receives. If ye endure chastening, God dwelleth with you. And God already let us know that he was with us. He said, but if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you. He dealeth with you as with sons. And what son is he whom the father chaseth not? Don't your earthly father chase chaseth you? He chastises you. He'll whoop you behind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He'll deal with you. And so also our Heavenly Father. He also chasteneth. He also deals with us as sons. And it says 8. But if ye be without chastisement. Whereof all are partakers. Then are ye bastards and not sons. Lord, I thank you that we're not bastards, but we are sons. If we have, if we, um, it says, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof are our partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. If God don't correct you, it says, you're a bastard and you're not a son. If something don't prick your heart, you're a bastard, you're not a son. It says furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, which we I just spoke on earlier, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? See, we gave our earthly fathers reverence for him correcting us. So how much more should we give the Father of spirits and live forever? From this, from this flesh on. 10 says, For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. So they came at us because of something that they wanted us to do. But he, for our profit, but God does it for us. When he chaseth us, when he chastised us, he does it for us, for our profit, that we might be partakers of of his holiness so that we can be partakers of his holiness he puts us into his right standings for for our good before his glory he does it whereas our natural fathers do it for their own self because this is something that they want for you to do or not to do 11 says now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous oh it's not going to feel good <laughs> you ain't going to feel good with this chastening y'all but grievous nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby did you hear that Afterwards, you're going to yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto you, which exercise thereby. Wherefore, 
lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled yeah because of that root of bitterness that goes into so many people's hearts and it springs up more bitterness and messes you up messes up your relationship you can't you know, you got to have a clear conscience and a clear heart. That's why we need um, to ask God to create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit in us so that we don't have this root of bitterness carrying it from person to person or from uh, place to place. You know what I mean? It says looking diligently. Lest any man fail of the grace. Don't fall of the grace. Least any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. And thereby many be defiled. A lot of people are defiled because of this bitter root. Lest, in there, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright for ye know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears oh lord he was looking for it with tears but he, he found no place of repentance Lord, help us to repent. Help us, O oh God. Help us to inherit the blessing that you have for our for our lives. 18 says, For ye are not come into the mount that might be touched, and that burn with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempters. You ain't came to the mount that can be touched and burned with fire or blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which voice they had they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore when they heard the voice of God they didn't want to hear it anymore they they said no Moses we want to hear you we don't want to hear God 20 says for they could not endure that which was commanded and if so much as a beast touch the mountain it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dark that's what the word said in Exodus 21 and so terrible was the sight that Moses said I exceedingly fear and quake 22 says but ye are come into Mount Sion and unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels you ain't even able to count how many angels did you have come into counter with? He said you came into the Mount Zion. And into the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. And to an innumerable company of angels. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, 
and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We came into a whole new covenant through Jesus Christ and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Oh, wow. He said, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. Don't refuse him that's talking to you. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall we shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Oh man, we gonna we gonna be in some trouble if we don't listen. Whose voice then shook the earth? But now he hath promised, saying, yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also he- I ain't just shaking earth no more. I'm shaking heaven too. Heaven and earth got to shake. So that tells you what's going on. How, why are we experiencing such great thunder, such great lightning? Oh, God is shaking not only the earth, but he's shaking also the heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. It says in 27, and this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaking, shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. So everything that's getting shaken is being removed. He's loosening off some things and those things that remain that can't uh, that can't be shaken will stay. It will remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. We are receiving a kingdom that shall not, that cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably. With reverence and godly fear. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. With reverence and godly fear. It said, it tells you that's a whole different fear. He said godly fear. He said, we need, we need to serve God acceptably with reverence we need to reverence God and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire some of us are going from trouble in my way I have to cry sometimes to a to I told the storm Don't you know you have power? Life and death are in the power of your tongue. Speak to your situation. Devil move. Get out of my way. I am prosperous. My soul is prosperous. My mind is elevated. I am more than a conqueror. We have to go from trouble in my way. There's a song called Trouble in My Way. I have to cry sometime to I told the storm. You know, you have to change the way you see things. You have to change the way you do things. God is moving you. He's elevating you. He's elevating your mind. He's letting you know the power that, that lives within you. He said, uh, not by might nor by power, but it's by his spirit. It's his spirit that lives within you that has power. He said, greater is he that's in you than he that's of the world. So, here it is. You can tell that devil move. You can speak to your situation. He said, speak to the mountain. Get out of my way. He says, I am prosperous. My soul is prosperous. My mind is elevated. I am more than a conqueror. 
Let me tell you something. People are looking for the five-fold ministry. And I dare you to declare that I am the five-fold ministry. It's in me. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. God is doing great things in and through me. The disciples were equipped. They were the five-fold ministry. Another thing, just because you don't understand it, don't mean it isn't real. And so, Father God, I just give you honor today. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our life. I thank you for shaking some things out the way. I thank you, Lord God, that you're letting us know it's time to wake up, that the alarm is going off. That it's time to, for us to wake up those that were asleep. I thank God. Thank you, Lord God, that this is a prophetic assignment. Lord God, I give you honor and I give you praise, Lord God, for the assignment that you have us on. I thank you, Lord God, that we can't get caught up into one area. But God, that you're doing multiple things all around us, Lord God. That everything is happening all at once while we stand in the place that you have us to stand in. Lord God, that you're doing things all at once. You're working out miracles. You're shaking. You're shaking things, oh God, into place. And God, I give you honor for that. And I give you praise in Jesus' name. That everything is about to happen all at once. Thank you, Father, that you said stand in the holy place. Thank you, Lord God, that you're bringing everything unto yourself, O Father. Thank you, God, that you're helping us to become even more submissive unto your will. That we'll do your will, Lord God, not not man's, Lord, but your will, Lord God. And that you're showing us who we are in you. And that we have power through your Holy Spirit. That life and death is in the power of our tongues. That we are able to speak to every situation. And that things have to move, oh God. That we are prosperous, oh God. That our mind is elevated. Oh God, that our mind is elevated. And we are more than conquerors through you. God, I give you honor for that today. I thank you that we are the full fria, sandaliente. Oh, we are the fivefold ministry through your Holy Spirit. Because if we have your spirit, God, that everything that's in you is in the Holy Spirit. Lord God, that we're not walking limited, but we're walking in the full fullness of you. And God, I give you honor for that today. I thank you because greater are you that's in us than he that's in the world. I thank you, God, that you're doing great things through us and that we are equipped. I thank you, Father, for that. And just because we don't understand, Lord, don't mean it ain't real. I thank you, Father, for that revelation. I thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. And I thank you, Father, for what you're doing even now. Thank you for covering us. Thank you for protecting us, our children, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for your hand, Lord God, that's over us even now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue, God, to move through us, oh God. Continue, oh God, to show how great you are in each and every individual that's in the sound of my voice, oh Father. I thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank God and amen. Until next time, God bless you.